Okay, right, we've got 24 people watching now. Um, before we start this, um, I'm actually expecting a delivery from Amazon at any moment, <laughs> right? Uh, so if my doorbell rings, I'm going to have to run off and open it. You'll hear me talking to the guy and I'll come back. It, you know, I don't live in a gigantic castle, so it will literally take me 30 seconds. So when that happens, pre-accept my apologies for running off. You'll, be able to, you'll have to talk amongst yourselves for a bit and then I'll come back and then it'll be all right. Um, is this is this shield making the sound quality nicer to listen to? Is it? I, I do appreciate it was a bit popping before. I bought this. Uh, I bought this thing here, and it apparently it, it claimed that it would stop. It would stop uh, popping, but it fucking did nothing. Ally versus brass nipples on a custom build wheel set. What's the rim? What's the rim? And is it internal or external? Internal or external nipples? Sounds ten out of ten. Ah, oh, cheers, Mister Fornicator. All right. All right, we've got 26 people watching now. Okay. Right then, should we get into it? Should we get into it? What's, what's an R? What's an R? What's that? What is it? What's an R4? What's an R460? Is it alum, aluminium, is it? What is it? All right. So we're going to get into this now. Let me see if this works. Yes, it does. Okay. So, um, DT Swiss aluminium. Aluminium, just go for uh, alloy then. Go for uh, alloy. Alloy, alloy nipples. Yeah. Let, well, hang on. How much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? And how many spokes is it? And do you ever ride in the wet? Because that'll dictate what, what nipples you go for, I reckon, to an extent. I've never, ever had a nipple break or strip out or anything. Like that. I've broken a few spokes. Ham beanie. Canyon Factory, oi, uh, tell them they're fucking knobheads about their stems, yeah? Tell them to sort their stems out, right? Tell, tell, them, to, tell them to, one, sort, sort their stems out, two, sort their customer service out, three, that lightweight fucking thing they made was bullshit. There's, that's my messages for them, okay? Apart from that, good work, lads. Could, could, you, could you quote that exactly and tell them, tell them from me, Okay. Uh, I'll go for, I don't know, man, uh, brass, brass. Cause if you go for an alloy rim, you're not really bothered about weight, are you? Yeah. Go for brass, mate. Go for brass. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Their, their aero stuff was shit. Nice one. Happy. Did you school them? Did you, did you, did you sit there like this? Did you, did you sit with your arms, your arms across like that? Just going. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, 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 mm hmm, no. Right, lads, got a few, got a few pointers about the things you've just been talking about, and then you just talked at them for about three hours until they were just sat there like, <gasps> did you do that? I hope you did. That'd have been brilliant. All right, let's get into this market analysis. Let's get into this market analysis. This will take the form of a lecture, and I will try and uh, entertain your questions uh, as we go through it. Um, I'm not promising. I'll answer, better answer all of them though. Um, let me just turn it off. There you go. So is it, that's, that's, there we go. That's better. They're pretty cocky fucks if they think they can design air better than they could. Yeah, exactly. Right. Hambini. This, le well, I, say, I say lecture, this, this lecture I'm going to give now, we're involved, it, we'll take all that sort of shit into account. Okay. We are going to analyze the entire cycling industry. Okay. Based on numbers. All right. And uh, this will explain where a lot of the cockiness and a lot of the bullshit and the lies and the fake crap and the things falling apart comes from. All right. Um, yeah. So in front of you, looking at the screen, uh, you should be able to see all of this stuff I've, I've written up in a Google Drive spreadsheet. Yeah. You can all see that, right? You can all see that. Yeah. Let me know if you can all see what, what your... Uh... <laughs> I'll upload it, Hambini. I will do. I'll upload it, mate. Don't worry. You know, and I'll upload all the other ones as well, you fannies. Um, okay, can you see that? Can you see what you see? Can you see on the screen? Okay, good. You can all see it, right? So, at the top, the part I'm highlighting now, okay, this part I'm highlighting now is a section which shows uh, different market sizes 
okay market sizes now this uses the um this uses the idea of how much how much revenue how much revenue these uh, different markets or different companies are getting in a year okay so these figures here all these big numbers here are yearly figures okay we're looking at one year all right now these figures here are 2016 figures all right they're all they're all for one year all right so let's just have a little quick look through here and I, th this will introduce it to you um the entire the entire bike market the entire bike market is 58 billion us dollars in 2016 the entire fucking thing. Now, that's literally everything to do with bikes ever sold, right? From top-end bikes down to little scooters and everything in between. All the clothes, all the... Everything. All of it. 58 million. 58 billion, sorry. 58 billion. Okay? All of it. Right? Now, that figure has been verified from various different um, annual reports from different companies. Um... For example, Durrell, who own Cannondale, have uh, they, they stated it. Um, Trek in their annual report stated it. Wiggle in their annual report stated it. You, you can check it yourself and you can Google it. Well, I'm not, none of this shit I'm making up today, all right? 58 billion for the entire cycling market, okay? Now, if we look down one, all right, the company Facebook, which you all know, which you're probably all on, just Facebook, just Facebook in 2016, 344 billion, right? 344 billion. So Facebook alone dwarfs the entire cycling market, the entire cycling industry. So that instantly should tell you the cycling industry is pretty pathetic, okay? Let's look down one again. Apple, 753 billion in a year. Fucking hell, right? You're seeing how it, you're seeing, they're putting it into perspective a bit now, right? Um, the next one down, smartphones. Now, this this is the sales, the revenue from sales of smartphones in 2016. Just the phones, right? Not the smartphone companies, just these things, just these devices. Total revenue, right? Total revenue, 428 billion. 428 billion just from the sale of these things nothing else nothing else no other sort of connected business just the sale of these things okay so again the entire cycling market 58 billion is a, a, a tiny fucking thing for, for an industry when there's single companies pulling in 344 billion 700 you know what i mean right you know what i'm saying here okay now this part here which i've highlighted in gray is um, a collection of the top drugs, the, the top medicines which are sold in the world. Um, let's go through them. The first one is called Hamira. Now, Hamira is the best-selling drug in the world. All right. Now, the best-selling drug in the world is it makes about eight billion. Carl, mate, everyone else is getting sound. Is the chat updating? Is everyone else? Is anyone else having problems with this? I think everyone's either. I think the chat might be updating. It's just no, no one's fucking typing anything. They're just listening to my my rant. Um, right. So Hamira is the is the biggest drug in the world. Hamira is the biggest the biggest drug in the world. Eight eight billion eight billion US dollars a year. Okay. Now Hamira is a. So, all right. Let, let's 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 test the chat. Let's test the chat. What, what is Hamira used for? What, 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 what condition is Hamira used for? Right. The first one, first one to guess it gets a ten percent discount on the Colt jersey, which I'm going to make. What's Hamira? Ten percent discount on the on the Colt jersey. Arthritis. Hambini, you get a ten percent discount on the Colt jersey when it comes out. Correct. It is arthritis. Rheumatoid. Well, it, a variety of different arthritis. Okay. Arth, it's arth, rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. Okay. Now, let's look down then. Abilify. What's Abilify? It's a drug. Also, eight billion a year. Right. What is it? 
whoever does that gets a 5% discount on the next jersey. What is it? What's Ablify? What's it, what, what is it used to treat? Have you just asked her? Depression. It's depression. Okay, correct. Cresta. What's Cresta? What's Cresta? Your mum's on it 17,000 a year. Sabamax, right. Cresta. Cholesterol. Cholesterol. Okay, it's cholesterol. All right, blood pressure, cholesterol. Yep, lipid lowering, cholesterol. Yep, okay. What's Advair discus? What's that? What's that used to treat? What's that used to treat? Anyone? Bronchitis. All right, bronchitis. Correct. Okay. So the let's get into this then. The the <laughs> right. So the yeah. Oh, does it? Fuck. <laughs> James bollocks. All right. Never mind. I missed that. Okay. <laughs> right. What a noob I am. Okay. Um. Right. So. So. Um, the top selling drugs in the, in the USA, in the world, right, are used to treat arthritis, depression, cholesterol, and bronchitis. Okay. Arthritis, depression, cholesterol, and bronchitis. Let's ignore arthritis for a second. Let's look at depression, cholesterol, and bronchitis. All right. Depression. People are spending 8 billion US dollars, right, on, on just one drug to treat depression. Now, there's fucking loads of different drugs to treat depression, right? Loads of them. So just this one drug called Ablify, 8 billion. The entire depression industry would be close to a trillion, I reckon, in ter- you know, with drugs and other treatments, all right? Now, that, that, now that's, the med- that's the medication of people, isn't it? Medication of people, which is a, you know, well-documented phenomenon based on profiteering and business from people's, people's um, maladies with the modern life, all right? Now, what else can be used to treat depression? What else can be used to treat depression? Anybody? That's free, kind of, and doesn't get make you dependent on, on doctors. What else can be used to treat depression? That's been proven. Fitness, Phil, Philip Bow, correct. Exercise, exercise. Exercise can be used to treat depression. Um, some people have, uh, okay, all right, diet and, all right, diet and exercise, breathing, Okay, exercise. Exercise can be used to treat depression. What's the best form of exercise in the world? Eight hours of cycling a week. Well, sour deep. Sour deep, mate, you've got a nail on the head there. Eight hours of cycling a week will fucking lift the spirits of anybody. All right? Okay. Um, cholesterol. What can, what, what, what can be used to treat cholesterol? Diet and eight hours of cycling a week. Okay. Bronchitis. What causes? What, what's the main cause of bronchitis in the world? What's the main cause of bronchitis? Why, why all these, why is 5 billion being spent on uh, Advair discus in a year? Anybody? Why is that? <laughs> that guy's computer rope. Yeah, nice. Uh, why, why is 5 billion being spent on Advair discus? What, what, are people, pollution? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Smoking, 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 smoking. That's right. Smoking. People are giving themselves um, bronchitis and and and, and a variety of breathing problems from smoking because they're fuckwits. All right. So what? If if you start exercise, that will allow, that will you know not go hand in hand with smoking, right? They're kind of like strange bedfellows, aren't they? So the bottom three here, we've got Ablify, Cresta, and Advair Discus. That's a fuckload of money which is being spent on essentially lifestyle diseases. Okay. I I know that depression, you know can hit you in a variety of ways, but it is to an extent treatable with exercise. All right. So those bottom, those bottom three, that money could be redirected into developing fitness and sport, right? Um, instead, it's used to, you know, instead it's just used on medicine, chemicals. The top one, arthritis, arthritis. Um, one of the um, treatments of arthritis is physiotherapy and that physiotherapy involves strengthening the muscles around the um the joint which is suffering from arthritis that is one potential way to do it which again doesn't involve medicating yourself all right so i think you get my point right there's this is my my daily mic punch there we go i got it out of the way um there's a real there's a real kind of skewing of priorities here all right the bike market is 58 billion 
And then you got this drugs bit here, which is, you know, using, getting people medicated, which is worth, in the, the drug market in total is worth trillions, worth way more, okay? So people, people don't spend that much money on bikes. I think that's my point, all right? The bike market in relation to other markets is absolutely fucking tiny, absolutely tiny, all right? Now let's, let's just scroll down here then. Um, let's look at the locations where bikes are bought and sold, all right? Um, the biggest market by far is Asia, is Asia, all right? And most of the bikes which are bought in Asia, most of the bike market is shopping bikes. Anybody who lives in Asia will know. They're cheap, strong, heavy, single gear shopping bikes with a basket on the front, right? There's... They're, they're, they're almost throwaway items in Asia, okay? That's most of the cycling market, all right? The next one is Europe, okay? So the Europeans ride more. Uh, most, most of the, or a larger proportion of the bikes bought in Europe are of a higher value than the basic shopping bikes, okay? But again, you know, mo most of the bikes are relatively cheap. Up to about $500 is the sort of general price of a bike in the world, all right? Then you've got the US, and then you've got the rest of the world, the rest of the world being, you know, the rest of the world, okay? So look at the total value of the bike market, which is 58 billion, and then divide that up. you looking at the um, the locations. 50% of that is in Asia, right? So 50% of 58 billion, right, is, right? You understand? Yeah, a half of that, basically, which is a very small amount of money relative to other industries, half of 58 billion about is being spent on really, really cheap shopping bikes. Okay. The mid-range bikes, which are mainly bought in the West and let's say Japan, right? The West and Japan. So Japan being a sort of westernized kind of uh, Asian country. Most of the more expensive bikes are bought in areas that that don't spend uh, as a percentage of the total bike market that that much on bikes. Okay, so it's a it's a it's, it's your standard uh, pyramid, isn't it? It's your standard pyramid of most of the shit at the bottom is really really cheap. The mid range is a little bit less, and then right at the top you've got the mid range to high end bikes. Okay, um, so. Road bikes, Ponzi road bikes, carbon road bikes, fancy wheels, fancy hubs, fancy gears, DI2 shit, all that fucking stuff is absolutely, absolutely minuscule, minuscule as, a, as an industry or as a part of an industry which itself is relatively tiny, okay? Now, anybody who works in, um, anybody who works in any sort of job where they design things, they make things, they engineer things. I'm looking at you, Hambini. Um, we'll know that a large proportion of the money is R&D, testing things, okay? Um, to design and test things properly takes a long time, takes a lot of money. Now, if you look at these companies, which are, you know, the high end, the high end of road bikes, none of them have any real money for R&D. So either they're all piggybacking on previously done R&D, they're borrowing designs from elsewhere, they're minutely fine-tuning things which, you know, don't sort of affect the function greatly, or, and the point I'm making here, is the testing, the beta testing, is done by the early adopters, us, okay? And that is why all your stuff fucking breaks. Okay, constantly. That's why high-end road bikes. That's why all it all of it fucking breaks, because we are being tested. We are the beta testers, because the numbers show you that they simply cannot have effective R and D like bigger industries. Right? If you're buying something from a little cottage industry, you're buying something from some guy who's got a house in the middle of Italy. Right? Who's just designing something himself? There's no fucking way he can run any major testing on it outside of his computer there's no sort of you know there's no way he can do it so the customer does it the customer does the, the customer does the testing all right um 
let's have a look at the bottom part then. Um, I've had a, I've, I've, I've done a bit of research here, the different companies. Here, we've got Trek, Specialized, Cannondale, SRAM, and Sh uh, Shimano and Giant. Um, they are not all of them, of course, but they represent a selection of the of the bigger ones. Let's just look at the, the amount of revenue they're making each year, right? Trek, which is one of the biggest, all right? It's been around since 1975, right? It's, it's, it's owned by a parent company called Intrepid. Despite being around since 1975, not in fucking 75, yeah, it's 42 years old, a 42-year-old company is only pulling in 900 million a year, right? Not a 42-year-old company is only managing to pull in 900 million a year, right? When did Facebook turn over its first 900 million? A couple of years. What I mean, that just shows that there's no money in cycling. One of the absolute most massive ones with 42 fucking years, 42 years, that's four decades, right? Is only managing 900 million a year. <laughs> it's fuck all. Specialized is managing 500 million. Specialized, man, the, one of the biggest, most visual names in the in the whole industry 500 million it's fuck all right i said this in my boutique video as well rafa made a million quid last year a million quid there's fucking teenagers on twitter doing penny stocks who are making that it's, it's pathetic cannondale made 888 million not just Canada, the, the the cycling part of derail made 888 million and that if that's cannondale that's segoy that's all the other the other ones they've got Pock. I'm not sure which ones it is, but it's all the, it's all that Cannondale group. It's all that Derail group. Eight hundred eighty eight million. Fuck. Oh, nothing. SRAM made six hundred million, right? Shimano, the absolute probably the biggest one that supplies gears to everyone and supplies gears across the range of super cheap bikes up to like the mega expensive ones. They only made two point five billion revenue, right? And that's not profit. That's revenue. So that's before profit. That's that's that, that's before costs, right? So that their their profit would be fucking way, way down on that. Um giant, absolutely a, a giant company, one point eight one point eight billion revenue. <laughs> I mean does this make sense to you? That the, the whole cycling world the whole cycling world is just is titchy and it's all just smoke and mirrors. There's no way in those numbers that any real mega innovation can be done, all right? And testing. I mean, they're all sort of piggybacking on, on other technologies. And you notice that cycling itself never comes up with any material innovations itself. It just uses materials that have been developed for other industries, like aero. Like the thing with cycling is they'll, they'll always say like, oh, this frame uses aerospace grade carbon. They don't say we made this carbon for our bike. We we made this carbon for cycling. It's always piggybacking on other industries' materials, right? You know, like fucking Canyon. Oh, we had to ask the Japanese military if we could use their fucking carbon. What? Uh, you know, like that. It's just bullshit. It's just bullshit. Yeah, Saudi. Yeah, of course. Of course they. Yeah, of course they do. Right even though they have a huge range of other stuff even though they uh no that no 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 that 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 shimano right okay yeah even though they yeah even even with fishing even with fishing this is shimano's number <laughs> right but fishing is is smaller than their um cycling part their, the cycling part is, is the largest is the larger part of their their uh, their business so yeah the whole cycling thing is basically just smoke and mirrors and a joke so they're not in, there's no material innovation and the way that things are made and designed in the world, if anyone plays games, anyone's a hardcore gamer, you'll know this. Games are made for, um, like, big leaps in games happen whenever there's a big leap in, whenever um, NVIDIA come up with a with big leap, right? Um, you know, the, 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 one of the first big leaps was between 8-bit and 16-bit. When, when the Amiga came out, that was, that allowed for, people to use that platform to make things so whenever a new material comes out then all the people who are using that material make new shit it's, they never make stuff themselves for bikes they're just like they wait for some carbon company 
who's making carbon for actual, you know, proper big fucking industries to make a new level of carbon, then they'll start using that and then say, are we using this? So yeah, 58 billion for the entire cycling market, most of that being in cheap shit bikes. The the absolute top end of of cycling is, is not innovating any materials. They're not making really any money. Everyone's sort of scrabbling around for their own little position and, and, and not getting anywhere. People like Rafa are making a million quid a year. It's now, I think you can understand like why shit is crap. Why things are crap in cycling compared to other, other industries. I mean, can you imagine like if smartphones broke as much as bikes broke? <laughs> or like, you know, you know what I mean? Like it, it they just, it, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. So yeah, um, I'm going to publicly share this spreadsheet if anyone wants it. I'm, I'm happy to state all my sources here. I can, I can, I can link you up to the sources. All of it's available on Google. It's all on Google. So um, I'm not, I'm not uh, making shit up here. Um, you can go even deeper with this. You can, you know, you can, you can, you can really sort of analyse the how how the industry's grown over the years. It hasn't really. Um, yeah. So there you go. Um, that was interesting, wasn't it? Uh, the next part of this, then we're going to talk about my leg my weird leg they do they do they do fuck up yeah I'll, I'll admit that yeah i mean everyone's you're all going to come along with some anecdotal shit now to try and prove me wrong of course i realize um but i think you can get my point um yeah so there you go um which is why oh and also right here's the other here's the other thing most of the um <laughs> yeah most of the uh most companies in cycling are not on the stock exchange, on, on, on any stock exchange. Shimano is, right? Giant is. But apart from that, none of them really. They're all sort of, they're all privately owned or they're all like under some other umbrella, right? Fast fitness tips, spreadsheet skills, mate. Cheers. Uh, yeah. All right. So that's that. Next thing we're going to do then is talk about my leg, right? I went out on my bike today. I lowered my seat. I lowered my seat. Um, and I, it did feel a bit better. I was I was clicking and clacking up a little up and down a little bit at the start. I think that's because of muscle memory. But as I got into the ride a bit more, it felt a bit better. I still felt unbalanced, um, but I managed to put out some uh, put out some actual <clears throat> half all right wattage today. Um, ah, oils, oils, nineteen seventy six. You you got a similar problem, have you, mate? You got a similar problem. Trigger point massage. What is that? What is your trigger point massage? What do you do? I mean, you know, if you don't want to go into loads of deal, that's cool, but yeah. No more compensatory patterns coming on to cover injury. Right. Okay. All right. That, that's, a, that's an interesting, interesting way to put it. So you think that like this, this me unweighting my foot on the left-hand side was a sort of, was my hip compens or something to do with my leg compensating for some sort of it being in the wrong position. Oh yeah, that might be that. I did do loads and loads of stretching as well, like piriformis one uh, today, yesterday, and that seemed to be that seemed to help it a little bit. Yeah, but it's definitely not better yet. Um, here's my Strava from today. Look at this. I fucking went for it a little bit. Um, I was, I didn't want to go too hard because I didn't want to. Uh... Ian, you got a diploma in sports massage. Yeah. What? What does that involve? <laughs> is that is that like massaging people as fast as you can no Jed haha <laughs> fucking hell Jed have I uh, have I accidentally have I accidentally like put that in everyone's brain now so like they're all uh, everyone's looking at which which foot goes down lower now I think I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be responsible for uh, sales of uh Sales of those little uh, wedges that Shimano sell going up. If it, does, if, if, it, if it doesn't have a lower RPM, why is it a hip problem and not in your head? Well, it's not my head, is it? It's in my leg. Keep up. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I think everyone, everyone's a bit wonky, aren't they, Jenny? Every, everyone's, everyone's body's not totally straight, is it? Everyone's body's a bit sort of, you know, left and right or whatever. There's no, you know, there's no, no, no one is truly symmetrical. Yeah. Just address it as much as you can then, mate. Anyway, yeah, this is my Strava from today. This is what I, what I went out and did. If I waited too long between... Right, right. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, so so oil was 1976. You were you managed to sort it out though, did you? With with um, you know re rebalancing your um, bio biomechanics. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll uh, I'll keep that up then. Yeah. So I went out today and I did. I wanted to like see how it was affected at different wattage. You know, you know whether whether like it would come back as I was keeping up a certain wattage or whether you know and certain cadences and stuff so i uh put in a little bit of put in a bit of an effort i did uh this was this was what the first one where i sort of first did it so i was like doing 356 nearly 400 watts for a couple couple of minutes nearly there and uh that was all right but like towards the end i felt like my left hip was kind of like getting a bit tight again even though i'd done some stretching uh, foam roller, yeah. All right, so you reckon I just have to keep up this stretching then, yeah? And then, what else? I, I, I chilled out after that, and then I, I did some shorter ones just to see if it was like, you know, coming back after, a, whether it was like the amount of time I was putting pressure on, or whether it was just the actual pressure I was putting through it. But when I did the shorter ones here, the shorter little intervals, it didn't it didn't seem to come back. So I think it's like if I keep the power on for a longer time, it, that's when it starts to sort of feel a bit funny um and then i the last bit here i, I went again I, I i put the power on a bit more again uh, and then towards the end of that interval this one was only like one minute 20 but it, it started to come back a little bit and then uh yeah so i think it's like it's a combination of amount of time under pressure combined with the the maximum amount of watts i put through and then this one here i tried to go like see how hard i could go at the end to see if it had come back um so I got to like 460 watts here just at the end. Um, that there kind of like when I when I finished that when I when I when I was cooling down here just just like spinning off at the end, then um, I felt it like oh like like when I was like in the zone when I was like really going for it, it I couldn't feel it couldn't feel anything. Um, but then when I sort of stopped afterwards, it was like oh yeah I felt like you know what I mean I was I felt like it was coming back a bit. Held a major, yeah. Is, is did, was it intervals for you? Was it when you started doing that? Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't think it was. I don't think it was anything specific for me. Uh, perhaps. What? Sorry, mate. You got a question there. Did it start suddenly? No, no. I think it was gradual. It wasn't like I didn't suddenly have a tweak one one day and then I felt all wonky. It was like I think I gradually sort of. Like I, I noticed it. Like I go I go on a longer ride with some climbing and I'd, I'd get like a sort of. I'd start feeling a bit like a shoulder ache, like, you know, I, I get, get, everyone gets a backache when they go riding for all fucking day and go hard, but like this was a bit more, you know, and I couldn't sort of, if I'd stop at traffic lights, so usually I can sort of do that with my head and I feel a bit better, but like, it wouldn't go away. And when I got home, I was like, I was like sitting on my chair and that, I felt a bit like, oh. And then at like the middle of my back, I had a sort of a, a, a point on the on the right-hand side of my spine that felt a bit a bit tight. And I did, so I laid on a foam roller and that, that went away. But then, um, like that just sort of gradually got worse. And then I noticed it was, I'll tell you what it was, right? That was a bit of a weird thing. I was, I was filming, I was filming myself walking up the road for making one of these excellent neo-noir films that, you know, are so popular. Um, and I noticed when I was walking, I might've said this the other day, I noticed when I was walking, like my, I'd sort of like, put it in the camera, I'd sort of like walk normally with my right foot and my left, I'd sort of swing it round. I'd walk and then swing it round like I was, like I was some sort of like doing it, like walking like a gangster, you know. Um, but yeah, so that was a bit weird. Like my left, like my something wrong with my hip or like my, you know what I mean. And then when I started going, when, when I just continued riding as I always do, I noticed I was getting more, like my back would start aching quicker, and then that foot clacking thing was more. I I start, started noticing it a bit. And then, uh, then I was just like, right, I'm, I've clearly got something wrong with me. So yeah, have a go at pushing a thumb along your muscle if you find a tender spot. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the standard way, isn't it? Yeah, I'll I'll do that. I'll I'll see I'll see if I can find anything around there. Yeah. Yeah, my, yeah, it probably is, mate. It probably is. So it's not my bearings in my pedal, then, is it? As as someone said. But then, yeah, when I was like. Like the second, the second part of the ride, like I stopped it here because I wanted to like keep my keep it so like uh, 
I had my all my data just in one bit without another sort of another thirty k on the end of it. Yeah, I think that's what it is, Pete. I think I'm not going fast enough. I think I'm not going fast enough. If I Google, yeah, yeah, I'm just not going fast enough. So yeah, when when I was riding back, I was like just just chilling out, just doing about thirty and um, tw- even less than that. But um, then I sort of I could feel it a bit, you know, my foot was clicking and clacking a bit. Um, yeah. So it it felt a bit. It was a bit better today. Like it wasn't as as comedy fucking like like a donkey that had been fucking half shot, but um, it was still a bit still a bit funny. But yeah, all right. C- ceramic bearings will fix it. Yeah, they, they probably would, mate. If I if I could somehow put ceramic bearings in my ankles, that might fix it. Wooden limbs don't ache as much. Yeah. But in winter, don't they sort of like swell up and bend? Yeah. Where's uh, where's Stopsy today? Anyways, he, he ain't come back yet. He ain't come back. Yeah. Right then, right then. So that's my leg. Anyway, so I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, I wanted to say I've said this on my Strava, but if anyone hasn't read that, um, I really did appreciate yesterday. Everyone, um, <laughs> yeah, Jed. Now that's the solution to to any bike problem, isn't it? earplugs you can't hear anything creaking on your bike yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i want to say thanks for all your help yesterday as well everyone um who made suggestions and stuff and it was really good it was really good stop see he never did no um he, he left a message on my uh he messaged he said he's in china or something but I, I i i don't know what's going on with him i don't think he is who he says he is um yeah so the next thing then um someone said i should start a strava group a strava club right a cult club um so i'm gonna do that but i wanted you lot to help me we need we need a, we need a very strict and very exacting set of rules for this club and we need you know mem- the membership requirements are very stern as well so i would like everybody in the chat who's watching this to post what kind of um what kind of rules do you think we should have for this cult club um, obviously, it's my decision is is the final decision on this, but I'll take all suggestions on board. All right. So if anyone wants to get into that, that'd be cool. Um, yeah. So what what rules do we need for this club? What are the entrance requirements? All right. Post up your rules now, and I'll uh, I'll make a note of them. No ceramic bearings yet. No ceramics. Only ethanol and bidons. <laughs> yeah. Shamar cream. Yeah. What else? No pedal-based power meters. That's another one. If you've got uh, PowerTap P1s, no laces. Yeah, no laces on shoes. No inner wheel width lower than 80 mil yet. No sleeve tats. Sub 10% body fat all the time. Ceramic BB, SRAM BBs. Yeah, they're fucking brilliant, SRAM BBs. My SRAM BBs, brilliant. What else are we having? I'll I'll design the logo for it, of course, and I'll make it like by invitation only. You have to apply <laughs> backsporans. Yeah, everyone, everyone has to everyone has to have a backsporan. No look pedals, no cycling caps. Gar, Garmin, no Garmin five twenties. This is this just, it's just turning out to be a list of things you're not allowed to have. It's a big fucking list. Yeah. We have to like pat you down at the door. What? Hang on a minute. That's a Garmin five twenty. No, <laughs> no pine it. No pannier racks yet. Yeah, but perhaps it's coming, mate. It's coming. Rafa kit. Well, I I've got Rafa kit, and I hey fucking hell, I tried. I finally tried on that Hambini orange bright bloody ISIS prisoner. Uh, <laughs> if we have FTP five watts per kilo, we're gonna have like five members. <laughs> no detachable pockets. Yeah, you're only allowed Rafa kit if you've if you've ripped it. If you haven't ripped it, you haven't been riding properly. Yeah, that fucking Rafa thing. I tried it on that flyweight jersey. Sleeves are baggy. Sleeves are baggy. What a load of shit. Sleeves are baggy. 2017. And it's got baggy sleeves. No Portuguese. Now nah. we're allowed. We're allowed Portuguese. No Portuguese builders. Yeah. No Portuguese builders. No, no one who manufactures things in Portuguese in Portugal. Anyone else is all right. 
No Brad. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. That fucking brand ambassador thing. Oh my God. I could do a fucking... I, I, my live stream tomorrow night if I'm online or next time I'm on. We're doing brand ambassadors. We are doing brand ambassadors, mate. Fucking hell. What a... What a car. <laughs> that is so ridiculous. You know, you all know what that is, right? It's... Oh my God. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. All right, we've got a good list there then. Got a good list there then. All right. So yeah, nice one. At least six hours a week. Everest, Everesting. Well, that's, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. I think that I th I'm. I'm not a fan of Everesting. I think that's stupid. That's like, what's the point? If you only the only the only the only mountain you're allowed to Everest is Everest. I mean, I, I can see why people do it, but nah. Is there is anyone has anyone done that here? Has anyone done Everesting? No. I mean, it's a challenge, isn't it? But whatever. I wonder what the smallest thing someone ever, someone's Everested is. No, nope. well, Philbo, no, nope, you're in. You did half. <laughs> nice. So you just you just rode forever. Yeah. You've Everested. What have you Everested? Eat plants. Oh, hello, eat plants. What have you Everested? Was it hard? Was it just boring? First decent wheel set upgrading from stock, picking parts or grabbing an officer. All right, all right. Yeah. All right. No, I cannot ride the same piece of road twice. Yeah. Yeah. Did it live on YouTube? Fucking hell, eat, eat plants. That's brilliant. That is good. Yeah. But I'm still not into it. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right then, lads. I'm going to cut it off here, I reckon, because uh, the Amazon man's about to come. Uh, yeah, I'll get this uploaded, I promise. And uh, you can all watch my excellent lecture on why the cycling industry is shit. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much again for helping me with my leg. Um, I have everything in Mars, but more mentally challenged, so boy. Yeah, you did it in St. Albans. Do you live in St. Albans? Which hill? Which hill? Which hill do you do in eat plants, mate? Was it the one that goes up to the main shopping area? It wasn't. It wasn't like up that fucking path that goes to the cathedral from the bottom, was it? Just a load of times. <laughs> Waverley Road. I, I know it. I know it. Fucking hell! How many times do you have to do that? That must have been like fifty times, hundred times. How many times do you ride up and down it? That is mental. If anybody doesn't know, St. Albans is a fucking hell, 468. Fucking hell, mate. Right, well, I'll give you respect for that. That's nuts. You must, did you have to avoid anyone who's drunk? Because you must have been going through the day and night doing that. Garmin 500, yeah. Yeah. All right, Jim Jones, mate. Yeah, sorry you missed it. Sorry you missed it. Yeah. All right, lads, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I've got to, get, I've got to get the got to get the door. I can hear him, I can hear him, hear him driving around. Yeah. So, yeah, nice one. I'll, uh, I'll get this uploaded later. And, uh, yeah, you can all enjoy my rant about the bike industry. All right. So, yeah, thanks again for helping with my leg. I'll, I'll keep you updated with it. Uh, check me out on Strava if you want. If you want. If you don't, then whatever. Night, <laughs> live drunks, brilliant. All right then, cheers, lads. Over and out. <laughs>